Spelling my name is Gerald Shepherd, but I prefer Jerry Shepherd. And can you spell it for the audience, please? Uh, G E R A L D or Jerry G E R R Y, preferably Jerry. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> what is your birthday? 10th of June, mm -hmm. 1926. 1926? So you are now? 92. This, this year I'll be 93. Wow. You look just like 60. Oh, thank you. Well, I was fortunate to have a second trip to Korea last year. Uh-huh. And that was it first time that since you left? No, Korea? second trip. Second first, trip. First time was eight years ago for the 60th anniversary of the commencement of the Korean War. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Korea last July, there were 21 nations, rep United Nations veterans. And I can't believe it, but I was the oldest Korean War veteran there. <laughs> and not only that, was I was the oldest, but I was also the only ve Korean veteran that also served in World War II. So I was quite proud. You should be. Yes, I was quite proud. You look really young. Oh, I thank you. believe it. What is the secret? I don't know. I'm... I still, I, I still play pennant lawn bowls. I, 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 won the, I was in the grand final team two years running, back to back, won the grand final in lawn bowls. You're kidding me. And I'm still, uh, I am still active in the Coast Guard of Australia. I'm the oldest active member of the Coast Guard in Australia. So I'm getting on OK. What is the secret formula? You should share uh, with me so that I can have I don't know. like that. Do everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Do everything go, wrong. Go, go out with bad women, drink, drink, and all the things you shouldn't do, I do. <laughs> That's what you've been doing? Yeah. And you look young like this? It's well, yeah, there. Thank, thank you. So, tell me about where were you born? I was born in Brighton, Victoria, Australia. Could you spell it? B-R-I-G. B-R-I-G. H-T-O-N. Brighton. Brighton, Victoria, Australia. Mm -hmm. And tell me about your family when you were growing up, your sibling and your parents. Well, my parents, I was brought up in the De Great Depression where everyone was out of work and uh, life was pretty rough. Life was pretty rough. People were put out of their homes and they were camping on the beach, on the for foreshore of the beach because they were put out of their homes and uh, it, uh, when you had a hole in your britches, the, your mother would sew a patch over that. Mm -hmm. Getting new clothes just wasn't a part of one's life. And <clears throat> were you, did you, did you, did your father have a farm? Did my father have... Farm. Farm. Farm, no, no. He was an office worker. Office worker. In England, mostly. Oh, I see. My parents came from England. I see. I was born here, as I said. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the school you went through. Oh, uh, I was, uh, wasn't much of a student. I only lasted in high school for about six months and went out to work because the family needed money and I wasn't doing any good at school, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, I don't understand because later on, after I left the Navy, I ended up at Melbourne University. Wow. So uh, I went from one extreme to the other. To the other. I so said, when did you quit the school and began to work? At 14 years of age. I'm sorry? 14 years of age. 14, so it's uh, like a 1940. Yes. Yeah, and what did you work on it? What did I? Yeah, what kind of work did you do? Uh, uh, storming. Storming. Mm -hmm. And I joined the Navy at the... Uh, the Navy is the only uh, one of the three services where you could join at 17 years of age. Oh. 
Army and Air Force was 18 and I joined the Navy on my 17th birthday and the Navy had quotas for each state in Victoria and if I, I, I had to, with the World War II going, I had to wait uh, uh, 13 m months to be called up. Whereas if I was born in South Australia or Tasmania where there's not so many people, I would have gone in on the day I, I signed up. But I had to wait 13 months because they had all the quota they needed from Victoria and New South Wales. So where, where did you get the basic military training? I mean, naval training. Yes. When, uh, uh, it was uh, 1943 like, that you joined the Navy, right? Yes, and I end up get, getting in on in 19, June 1944. I end up going in for training at Flinders Naval Depot, Victoria. Flinders Naval Depot, Victoria. Uh -huh. uh, I was very fortunate. I was guard of honour for the uh, Duke of Gloucester, who at that time was the Governor General of Australia, and they opened a, a, a new ship dry dock in Sydney which joined Garden Island to the mainland and I was guard of honour for the, for, for the Governor-General mm. of Australia. Mm -hmm. And I, can I speak of my service sure. life? Yeah. Uh, I, was, I, I don't like to boast, but I, I was in Tokyo Bay for the surrender of the Second World War. Uh -huh. In actual fact, the, the Japanese envoys flew to Manila in the Philippines to find out about the terms of the surrender mm -hmm. and we were in Manila Bay at the time and I have photographs of the Japanese envoys getting off the plane to see what the surrender terms were. Did you bring it? I'm sorry? Did you bring that picture? Yes, I've Did got you? those pictures. Yeah, can you show? Not, not, not here, no. Not to, I, haven't, I haven't gotten them here today. I have pictures here but not of the surrender, but I have plenty of them, and also a DVD. I've got the only DVD that's still in existence, an American DVD of the surrender on the Missouri, uh, USS Missouri. Where uh, did you get the DVD? I got it through, uh, I got it through, through an email, through an email, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a lot of trouble getting it copied, but I finally got a few copies of it, which I'm happy to give to anyone that's really interested in the Second World War. But I also have, have the shots taken on board the Missouri photographs. And so you had a camera at the time? No, no, the Japanese newspapers took the photographs and we were able to get them from the Japanese news agency. Ah, so you still have those? I still have those. Did you did you scan it? No, I've had it scanned. Yes, I've had it scanned. Oh, you had it scanned. So you can you can share that with me. Yes. Can do you have my business card? Yes, I have in my pocket. Yeah. Can you send it to me? Yes, I can. I'll send you a copy. I'll send you a copy. The the copy of DVD. I I, I would scan. like to if you could scan it what I send you and you send it back to me, please. Oh, absolutely. I would love to do it. Yeah. It's the only, it's the only copy of the surrender that in the, of the Second World War. It's the only copy. Yeah. No one else has got it. I want to... I, uh, personally, everyone to their own opinion, but I'm, I'm the only person that has spoken up that I don't believe the Americans should have dropped the atomic bombs on, on Japan because they said that, that, that would, it saved a million uh, American troops' lives by not having to invade Japan. And when we went ashore, it was only sailors that were in Tokyo Bay, mm -hmm. and when we went ashore, you had all the Japanese soldiers still in their Japanese army uniforms because that's all they had to wear, and they were so dice, docile, mm. I, I doubt whether one single American troop would have been killed to invade Japan. Yeah. And I read a book uh, called Brighter Than a Thousand Suns by an American physicist that developed, helped to develop the atomic bombs, 
and he was aghast that, that, that they dropped them because Japan was finished. Uh, they had no oil left. You can't fight a, a, a war without oil. They had no oil left. The country was finished. And I, I strongly think that the, the Americans were, they were worried that they, the war would finish before they could drop them. And I'm the only person that I know of that, uh, that uh, is against uh, the Americans dropping the two bombs. Yep. That's You're just right. my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I have saw photographs published by the Japanese news agency, the Nippon Times, and I saw photographs, and one in particular I can't get out of my mind. It's a big, large photograph, a very large photograph, of a Japanese mother who was breastfeeding her baby when the atomic bomb, and the flash burnt all the clothes off her and the baby, and the baby's skin was fused to the mother's breast, and each the mother and the baby had big black holes burnt right through their bodies by the flash, mm -hmm. and, and, and the atomic and they've never been published in the West, never been published. So uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, countries do use propaganda and so forth to meet their own needs, you know. So. I'm going to make sure that I will send everything back to you after you send me those pictures. Yes, all right. I'll scan it and I'll put it in the website so that everybody can see it, that this is your picture, okay? All right, yeah. C can I speak off camera now? Sure, hold on. <laughs> 